In many ways, Libby, Montana is like most small towns in America. People are friendly, hardworking, and family is the number one priority. What sets Libby apart, though, is asbestos. Lots of it. Vermiculite ore, which was mined and processed there for over 70 years, is contaminated with tremolite, a naturally occurring, relatively unknown form of asbestos. You can see all these areas of plaque. Escalated occurrence rates for lung cancer, asbestosis, and mesothelioma in the community prompted US EPA to dispatch an emergency response team to Libby in 1999. And what we found shocked us. Um, we expected to see something that was limited to workers or former workers, but what we saw was a problem that had spread around the community and disease rates that were 40, 60 times the national average, and we've been working on it ever since. And we found that the vermiculite contained quite a bit of asbestos, and it had found its way into the town in various places, in people's homes, in the schools, in the parks, and we've been working on that ever since. In its heyday, the Libby mine produced 90% of the world's vermiculite, which was processed and marketed as building insulation and a soil additive. It was sold commercially all over the world, but here in Libby, Montana, where it was produced, of course, people could back their pickups right up to the processing plants and load the pickups up and take it home. The stuff is just all over Libby, Montana. People have used it for everything, as attic insulation, in walls, put down just loose on driveways. It was used as a soil amendment in yards and gardens around town. You just really find it everywhere. EPA's first priority in Libby was the removal of hot spots around town near schools, ball fields, and vermiculite processing plants. Then, after an exhaustive screening study, sampling, and inspections, US EPA and their contractors are now identifying and removing contaminated vermiculite insulation from attics and other accessible interior and exterior spaces. The sampling was aimed at going to each and every home and doing a visual inspection uh, to check for vermiculite. When that was done, what we came out with as an initial cut was about 1,300 homes that would need cleanup based on finding vermiculite in the attic as insulation or visible vermiculite in yards and gardens. Residents were naturally apprehensive especially considering the toll taken on the community already. I mean, literally hundreds of people have died and thousands of people are affected by this asbestos to some degree. And that makes the cleanup all the more difficult. When people know that the health effect is real, when they live with it every day, it makes the stakes a bit higher. I went out and turned my flag upside down and I was very severely criticized that I was disgracing the flag, which I would never do. Um, I served under that flag and would again, saying that was just my little protest and calling attention to the, the plight of my family and others. When EPA first got to Libby, we realized that this problem was big enough that we were going to need on-site support for residents all the time. We set up an information center at 501 Mineral Avenue and we encourage people to go in there at any point to ask questions, get information. To thoroughly clean many properties, residents need to be temporarily relocated for one or more weeks. During a relocation meeting, a community involvement coordinator works with residents to arrange EPA subsidized lodging, meals, expenses, and pet boarding. With the completion of the preliminary work, the residential cleanup is scheduled for individual properties. Every morning, EPA's contracting teams meet to discuss the day's assignments and any special needs that come up. 
Many of the workers are from Libby and the surrounding area. We've got an extraordinary team of people. Many of them have relocated to Libby. Uh, they love the area. They love their work. They're very dedicated to, to doing this job. In talking with them, I know uh, it gives them a great sense of satisfaction to clean up these homes and be on the road to making Libby a safer place to be. Each home literally becomes a hazmat site with hot, cold, and warm zones. For an interior or attic that needs vermiculite insulation removal, a vacuum truck and vacuum box are used to vacuum and hold the contaminated insulation. To filter air and prevent any airborne fibers from escaping, a negative pressure air system with a HEPA filter is also installed. The system requires plastic sheeting to be attached around windows and doors to completely seal the area. The insulation is then vacuumed from the attic or interior using a long, large diameter hose leading to the vacuum box and truck. When the bulk material is taken out, then there will be some detailing work, and that includes just smaller hoses, little brooms, scrapers, nooks and crannies, and really trying to get out all the last bit of vermiculite possible. Clear sealant is applied to any cracks detailing can't reach followed by an encapsulant spray to lock down fibers that may be left behind. The area is visually inspected, then air samples are taken and analyzed. For interior cleaning, the setup is similar to insulation removal, requiring a negative pressure air system and windows and doors to be sealed. The majority of items in the rooms are then cleaned in place using smaller HEPA vacuums and moist towels. The focus is on horizontal surfaces and carpets where asbestos fibers may have settled. If exterior removal is required on a property, a large water tank is needed to provide water used to suppress dust while digging. Depending on the amount of soil to be removed, the material may be excavated with heavy construction equipment or loosened with hand tools, then vacuumed. Air around the edge of the cleanup area is also sampled to make sure contamination isn't migrating off-site. Afterwards, the soil is sampled to confirm all contaminants have been removed. Removed materials are transported and deposited at the Libby mine site. EPA is still formulating plans for the future of the Zonalite Mountain Mine and Access Road. The final step in Libby's residential removal program is restoration. Attics are re-insulated, access holes and incidental damage are repaired, and items are returned to their original location. Outside, lawns are backfilled and regraded before being hydro-seated or resodded. Flower beds are backfilled with topsoil, and residents receive credit for any flowers or plants removed during the excavation. Well, I've certainly never seen a site where the emotions run as high as they do at Libby. Very few places in the country will you run across health effects that cut so deep and are such a part of the community. It's taken several months for us to work through concerns of the community, overcome their skepticism, of what EPA was going to do, but I think by and large we've been able to do that, build some trust, um, meet some commitments, and at this point I think we've got a pretty good working relationship with Libby. The flag flown upside down is a distress signal, and I felt like the entire community was under distress, and especially my family out here was in distress. So um, all during the cleanup, uh, uh, I left it that way, and. Afterwards, I felt comfortable enough about the cleanup and the work that was done and the care with which it was done. I turned my flag back over and was very thankful for this being taken care of. So I can't emphasize the importance of getting this done and getting it over with and getting it cleaned up for everybody's health and safety in the community.